Well, I'm Linda King and I'm a sort of, I suppose, what you might call a multidisciplinary artist. I've worked in lots of different fields, uh, including performance, um, walk bit, walking about at, costume, uh, at festivals in costume and characters, which I've invented. Um, I've done a lot of murals. I've worked in community arts. I've done pretty much most different kinds of mediums, um, but at the moment I'm doing a designer maker degree at East Sussex College in Hastings, which is a University of Brighton accredited degree. So that's where I'm at at the moment. But I think, you know, anyway, as you get older, things change and the way you work and live changes and what you do. I mean, I've got really, since I've moved up to Orr, which was in 2010, I've got, because I've got a massive back garden and a front garden, but I've got massively into gardening. So my kind of badger track, if you like, you know, like where I go and what I do has changed. Um, and it's changed again slightly during lockdown. But I kind of, I'm sort of embracing being a kind of ageing hermit. <laughs> and I've been really enjoying being here. My house is right on the main road. It's actually set back from it slightly. But my front garden, which I've been developing for the last three years, is a wild garden, which will then partially become a dye garden. But I have a good relationship with a lot of the people who walk past because the front of my house is painted with murals. So it's like whatever I, whatever is in my head ends up being all over my house and in my garden and in my kitchen. It's all the same thing all the way through. So I suppose I've just become more myself over the years. And I probably, I don't go to as many private views or any of those things because I'm too busy doing what I'm doing. Um, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram and I've met some really interesting people through that. And I have sort of Instagram friendships which suddenly come into the, some, sometimes come into the real world and sometimes don't. But I've had such good chats on there and learnt a lot and I've recently been posting quite a lot of scary archive pictures of me over the years in various different ludicrous hairstyles and costumes and that's actually been really good fun. It's sort of like doing a retrospective. I'm really glad that I've got such a strong photographic archive of various incarnations and work over the years. Although I did have a sort of gallery come shop myself for many years in Hastings. For seven years I had fab and groovy. Um, and, and it wasn't a white wall gallery at all, it wasn't like that. And it never was, never was intended to be. Um, but I think that there is, I just think there's room for a bit of everything, which maybe sounds a bit facile, but um, it's kind of part of the mix. I think, you know, that sort of very formal space works in some ways as part of what is, you know, basically the the art business, you know, the sort of industry of art, because, you know, I know professional artists and that's a very important part of how they get their work seen nationally and internationally because things are accepted on that very serious level. But there's so many different ways of showing art. Um, I mean, I'm not a gallery artist in that sense. My stuff works much better. Like when I did Open Studios here in 2018, it worked brilliantly because it was me in my own setting showing my own work. Personally, I prefer something where the language is immediately apparent and you don't need to ask any questions about it because you can, you can either completely get it or completely not get it, possibly, and, and, and respond with it without having to be told anything about it. I mean, for me, that's, personally, that's a really successful piece of work. But um, I do like to feel, I like to photograph a lot of process and to write a lot of notes um, and to reflect on things. And also I do refer back to my house and my own possessions a lot because, because this is what I have here. This is what I live with. And you know, if you're gonna start talking about different stitches and embroidery, well, I've got a lot of textiles in the house and, and obviously I have them because I relate to them. So it makes perfect sense to me to then put them in the journal. Um, and it's a thing which is very necessary. It's like input, input, Johnny Five. You know, you can't just draw on yourself all of the time. You know, like uni is a massive input, but also going out and looking at things and talking to people and drawing stuff and being in a different place, going for walks, all really important and part of your work. I mean, there's, there's certain aspects of those things which I should do more, but to be honest, I mean, I get up about five or six in the morning and there still aren't enough hours in the day but I've got very interested in rust dyeing as per my apron. 
and several other garments and things, which is something I'm really interested in myself. And that's developed more over the years with the garden and looking at permaculture and no dig and growing your own vegetables. And, and so the sort of natural progression into textiles and then dyeing kind of has developed over the, over, well, partially through doing textiles at, at uni as well. So um, I'm planning to, to, well, I've got about 20 plants in the garden I can use for dyeing anyway, but I'm planning to do a much more formal dye garden and then actually get into the chemistry and the, the sort of the witchcraft of dyeing a lot more. But rust dyeing has been great. It's a really good gateway drug into natural dyeing. So I've been using eucalyptus leaves and walnut leaves and oak leaves which I soak in white vinegar and water and so I've got this sort of <laughs> this sort of place where I get my cauldron on downstairs at my house it's my dirty workshop because rust dyeing is quite a, a mucky affair um, and so I'm like an old witch down there really sort of boiling things up for hours on end um, but I love the results they've everything I've done so far I've been really pleased with and I've been using a roll of silk that I was given from 1997 because if you keep things long enough they're gonna come in useful um, so this has also been completely tortured and boiled and uh, there's some lines of green here and I'm not sure whether that was the dye transfer from the garden twine with which I lashed this onto several cans or it might be from the creeping bell flower which um, occupies the side passage of my house. It's often hard to tell with these things and there's an awful lot of happenstance and chance involved and I literally know nothing. I mean I'm not very good at reading all the instruction books. I'm quite good at recipes but I'm not very good at being told what to do. Some, some leaves you can use like a mask to mask areas off and some leaves will just transfer their dye into a piece of fabric and you actually get quite a lot of the leaf shape happening too. So they have a couple of different functions. But they, they give more variety of colour as well, like this, there's all the greys and the blue blacks, which are kind of nice. And actually dock seeds, when the docks go brown, you just sprinkle a load of those on and you get spots. So actually all the spotty bits on here are just from sprinkling dock seeds on. Again, a fine example of practical hedonism. I like things to have a, a sort of attractive and um, in, you, some, might pe some people might say a useless function, as in by just being nice to look at, but I like the practical side of things as well. Salvia. Bees love it. I try and have a lot of stuff in here that I know that will attract bees and insects. And as I'm going to be developing my dye garden, there's about 20 plants in here that I can dye from already, but it's something I want to develop more of. Uh, so I will be consciously making areas of dyeing plants and a lot of those just naturally attract more insects. So that's pretty cool. Lots of things just come back if you let them. There's a lot of gardening that goes on that's unnecessary. So really everything that's here that I've made or that was here that I've developed, it's all part and parcel of the same thing. The whole approach to having somewhere where I could live and work is just as much about the outside of the house and of the garden as of the inside of it. And it, it's, a, it's its own kind of microcosm, it's its own kind of... Um, its own kind of world. Um, with the food, with the things that come into the house, the things that I grow, the people that visit. It's, it's all interconnected, the same as all the mediums that I use in my work. Probably not. <laughs>